banks provide short-term finance to companies in the form of an overdraft on a current account. The advantage of an overdraft is its flexibility. When the cash needs of the company increase with seasonal factors, the company can continue to write checks and watch the overdraft increase. When the goods and services are sold and cash begins to flow in, the company should be able to watch the overdraft decrease again. The most obvious example of a business which operates in this pattern is farming. The farmer uses the overdraft to finance the acquisition of seed for arable farming, or feed through the winter for stock farming and to cover the period when the crops or animals are growing and maturing. The overdraft is reduced when the crops or the animals are sold. The main disadvantage of an overdraft is that it is repayable on demand. The farmer whose crop fails because of bad weather knows the problem of being unable to repay the overdraft. Having overdraft financing increases the worries of those who manage the company. The other disadvantage is that the interest payable on overdrafts is variable. When interest rates increase, the cost of the overdraft increases. Furthermore, for small companies there are often complaints that the rate of interest charged is high compared with that available to larger companies. The banks answer that the rates charged reflect relative risk and it is their experience that small companies are more risky. Skipping breakfast has drawbacks it's no mystery why so many people routinely skip breakfast, bad timing. It comes at a time when folks can be more occupied with matters of grooming, attire and otherwise making themselves presentable for a new day. However, studies conducted both in the United States and internationally have shown that skipping breakfast can affect learning, memory and physical well-being. Students who skip breakfast are not as efficient at selecting critical information for problem solving as their peers who have had breakfast. For school children, skipping breakfast diminishes the ability to recall and use newly acquired information, verbal fluency, and control of attention, according to Ernesto Pollitt, a UC Davis professor of pediatrics whose research focuses on the influence of breakfast on mental and physical performance. Skipping breakfast can impair thinking in adults, also. For both children and adults, a simple bowl of cereal with milk goes a long way toward providing a sufficiently nutritious start to the day. Green Burgesson recommends choosing a cereal that's low in sugar. The area that is now South Africa has been inhabited by humans for millennia. The San, the original inhabitants of this land, were migratory people who lived in small groups of about 15 to 20 people. They survived by fishing and hunting and by gathering roots and other wild foods. They did not build permanent dwellings but used rock shelters as temporary dwellings. Around 2000 years ago Khoikhoi pastoralists migrated to the coast. In the eastern part of present-day South Africa, iron-working societies date from about 300 AD. 
The Botswana and Nguni peoples arrived in this region around 1, 200 AD. They lived by agriculture and stock farming, mined gold, copper and tin and hunted for ivory and built stone-walled towns. Over the centuries, these societies had diverse contacts with the Khoisan. Strife between the San and the Khoikhoi developed over competition for game, eventually the Khoikhoi became dominant. These peoples lived in the western part of present-day South Africa and are known collectively as the Khoisan. According to Dr. Ron Fessenden, MD, MPH, the average American consumes more than 150 pounds of refined sugar, plus an additional 62 pounds of high fructose corn syrup every year. In comparison, we consume only around 1.3 pounds of honey per year on average in the U.S. According to new research, if you can switch out your intake of refined sugar and use pure raw honey instead, the health benefits can be enormous. What is raw honey? It's a pure, unfiltered and unpasteurized sweetener made by bees from the nectar of flowers. Most of the honey consumed today is processed honey that's been heated and filtered since it was gathered from the hive. Unlike processed honey, raw honey does not get robbed of its incredible nutritional value and health powers. It can help with everything from low energy to sleep problems to seasonal allergies. Switching to raw honey may even help weight loss efforts when compared to diets containing sugar or high fructose corn syrup. As economic troubles stops flare up around the globe, the earning estimates of American firms who do business abroad begin to flatten. Without these international consumers to buy their products, there are fewer sales, which means that inventories pile up. When there is more supply than demand, prices go down. Lower prices would normally cause demand to pick up, but in an uncertain economy people tend to postpone purchases. We see this tendency in the American economy with computer products where consumers believe that the prices will go down if they wait another six months, so they decide to hold off. This tendency causes further gluts in the market, which eventually leads manufacturers to slow production. They lay off workers, causing domestic consumption to fall further since there is less money to buy goods. These effects ripples throughout the economy and create a deflationary spiral that can lead to a recession or even a depression.
With a good system of crop rotation, and especially with the addition of any sort of fertilizer you may be able to come up with, it's possible to grow crops on a plot of land for upwards of 2-3 years at a time with good results. Ultimately, though, you must let the land rest if you hope to continue farming there in the long run. Allowing a plot of land to rest for a period of time is known as letting the field go fallow, and there are several reasons for this. Allowing a field or plot to lie fallow means that you don't grow anything new on it, don't harvest anything and don't graze any animals on the land for at least a year. Sometimes a field will lay fallow for two, three or even four years, but the traditional standard on many farms was to let a field lie fallow once every two, three years. This fallow period allows the land to replenish many of its nutrients. The root networks of various grasses or ground covers, like clover, have a chance to expand and grow, which further strengthens the soil and protects it from erosion. During the fallow period, there are many beneficial flora and microfauna, including cyanobacteria, which live in the soil. These microorganisms continue to be active at the root level, steadily improving the quality of the soil so that when you come back in a year or two, you can begin planting food or cash crops anew.